From the campuses of Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Good Housekeeping Magazine, presents the transcribed College Quiz Bowl. Tonight, the University of Minnesota is out to challenge the varsity scholars from Georgetown University. The school that last week toppled the undefeated Syracuse University team in an upset here in the College Quiz Bowl. And now, here in Radio City, New York, is your master of the quiz, Alan Ludden. Hi there, everybody. It's good to have you with us again for another intercollegiate battle of the brains. Now, let's meet the teams. First, we're going way out to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Bob Boyle of station KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul, is on hand to serve as referee for the Minnesota team. You know, it was Minnesota last year that fielded a winning team for a record-breaking eight straight weeks in our exciting college quiz bowl. How do they look this year, Bob? Well, they look to be the equivalent, if not the better team, than last year's team, Allen. They're four bright Minnesota team members who are anxious to better last year's record. Here they are to introduce themselves. Colleen Helgerson Nelson, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Eleanor Vale, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Joe Sheckman, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Chuck Mulkey, Hopkins, Minnesota. Now, let's move way down to Washington, D.C., where Mac McGarry of station WRC Washington is standing by to act as referee for the Georgetown University team. Are your team members confident, Mac? Well, they sure are, Alan. Last week's win was a narrow one, so they're going to try for a more comfortable margin tonight. And here they are to say hello. Jim Malloy, Staten Island, New York. Leo Donovan, New York City. Paul Troy, Melrose, Massachusetts. Bob Clisley, Rochester, New York. We've met both teams. Now, before Roger Tuttle explains our rules, may I point out that we recognize the fact that here in the College Quiz Bowl, we put the emphasis on a quick recall of specific facts. But we are also trying to give you an opportunity to meet a few of the many remarkable, well-rounded personalities to be found today on every American campus. Okay, how about those rules, Roger? Right, Alan, here they are. Alan Ludden asks a toss-up question worth 10 points. And the first team to signal it knows the answer gets a chance to answer. When Georgetown University signals, you'll hear... And when the University of Minnesota signals, you'll hear... And by means of a special electronic selector, the team which signals first, even by a split second, activates its light here in New York City and makes it impossible for the other team's light to flash. Now, if a team gives a wrong answer to the toss-up question, the other team is given a chance to answer it. And whichever team gives the right answer gets a bonus question worth a stated number of points. Now, the team with the most points at the end of the game is the winner and returns next week to defend its title in the College Quiz Bowl. Thank you, Roger. Now, remember, teams, you may interrupt a toss-up question before I've finished asking it, but if you do and if your answer is wrong, your team will be penalized five points and I will repeat the question, giving the other team a free crack at it. Okay, those are the rules. And that's the opening whistle, so let's go. Here is a toss-up question. Coming up first, may I point out, is a 30-point bonus for the winner of this toss-up question. Yes, sir. The present Queen Mother is the mother of Queen Elizabeth II. For 10 points, who was the mother of Queen Elizabeth I? Georgetown. Jim Malloy. Anne Boleyn. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. <laughs> All right, George, now you got a potential 30-point bonus. You know, Captain Ahab sought to find a white whale. Columbus went looking for a short route to India. For 10 points apiece, we want you now to tell us what the following people were looking for. The Greek philosopher Diogenes. An honest man. That's right. Who is that? Leo O'Donovan. Leo O'Donovan. 10 more points for Georgetown. All right. You'll get 10 more points if you can tell us what Martin Frobisher... William Baffin and Major Robert Rogers were looking for. Anybody in the Georgia? Jim Malloy. The North Pole? No. No. The Northwest Passage. All of these men were unsuccessful in their attempt to find the passage, okay? You can still make 10 points if you tell us for what was the German scientist Robert Koch, Koch, Robert Koch searching are looking for. What was he looking for? Paul? It was uh, something to do with germs, sir. It was uh, yeah. the germ for a certain disease. Let's see. I will uh, anthrax, I think. Something the like that. I want to accept it. He was looking for germs. He was looking for the germs of a certain disease. It happens to be the tuberculosis bacillus, the, the TB bug, or a cure for tuberculosis. But he was certainly on the search for germs, and we will accept that. 
All right, now, the time and score, Roger. Right now, Georgetown, 30 points. Minnesota has nothing at the moment. And the time, 22 and a half minutes to go. Coming up is a 30-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. A group of American men recently received a dressing down on the matter of dress. For 10 points, who were the men? Georgetown. Paul Troy. Uh, those were the men in the Air Force, Alan, who were given a directive by Can the... you take it, Minnesota? Can I you... I think that perhaps Chuck Moulty uh, wants to make a try at that, Alan. Chuck? The only thing that I can think of, Alan, would be members of the diplomatic corps. No, I'm sorry. You were both wrong. It was Marines. the United States Marines. General Lam Lemuel Shepard, Jr., commander of the Marines, ordered all Marine commanders to take immediate steps to remedy the deplorable situation of many Marines wearing their trousers too short and too tight in the seat. All right, here we go with another toss-up <laughs> question coming up for a 30-point bonus for 10 points. What was the name of the gifted young sculptor of Cyprus who was a confirmed bachelor until he fell in love with a young lady of his own creation. Minnesota. Colleen Helgeson Nelson. That would be Pygmalion. That would be right, Colleen Helgeson Nelson. Pygmalion, who fell in love with Galatea. And Colleen, you've got a chance now for the Minnesota team to make 30 points. Here's the bonus question now that's really a game. I'm going to give you a series of definitions for short words that when grouped together sound like the name of a geographical place. Ten points each time you name the place. Okay? You ready, Minnesota? Yep. Uh, give us the name of the city that sounds like a diminutive for Elizabeth, the last name of a famous southerner, and the edge of a garment. Beth Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Bethlehem, right, for ten points, Minnesota. All right, now give us the name of the country that sounds like a pigtail and the noise that a sheep makes. No, her, her time. Cuba, Cuba. All right. The name of a state that sounds like a very ancient cargo ship, a slang word meaning to fire, and a type of cutting tool. Arkansas. Yeah. Ah, Arkansas. Arkansas. Right for 10 points, Minnesota. Okay, Roger, what's the time? Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Before we get along to another toss-up question, let's find out what the stakes are in this quiz game, Roger Tuttle. Right, Alan. Each week, Good Housekeeping magazine will award to the school of the winning team a $500 gift to be administered by the college. Now, it may go to a scholarship fund or to a campus activity. And each member of the losing team will receive an attractive, dependable Whitnauer wristwatch, a distinguished member of the Longines Whitnauer family of fine watches, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. Well, those are the stakes, Alan. Now, with 19 minutes to go, the score tied. Georgetown 30, Minnesota 30. Back to a toss-up question. All right, with a musical bonus coming up. For 10 points, tell us. What well-known young man had the habit of going to bed with his socks on? Minnesota. Colleen Nelson. My son, John. <laughs> All right, Colleen Nelson. Nelson, Helgeson Nelson. Nelson. My son John in the nursery jingle. Do you know it, Colleen? You yeah, know the jingle? Diddle, diddle, dumpling, my son John went to bed with the stockings on. Uh -huh. One shoe off and one shoe on. Oh, All right. Diddle, diddle. Here's your musical bonus, Minnesota. Here's a popular musical bonus worth a potential 30 points. Now, you know, good things come in threes if you can believe the titles of the following songs. We'll give you 10 points each time you identify them. Well, pop. Great God, stop killing this, my God, walk down the oh, rain, 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 rain. That's rain, 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 rain. That's right for that ten. That was Eleanor Vale, Ellen. All right, Eleanor, right for ten points. Okay, what's the title of this one? Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. That's right, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow for ten more points. All right, the title of this one. <laughs> right for 10 points. Score time, Roger. Right now, 18 minutes to go. Georgetown 30, Minnesota 70 points, Alan. All right, 25-point bonus coming up. Now, here's your toss-up. For 10 points, tell us. By what other name do we Americans refer to the Battle of the Little Big Horn? Minnesota. Eleanor Vale. Custer's Last Stand. Right, Custer's Last Stand, Montana, 1876. Here's your bonus. Minnesota, get out your pencils and paper. Get out your pencils and paper, Minnesota Soda, because here's a mathematical bonus. Take the number of the amendment to the Constitution that extends suffrage to women. 19. 
Ten. Multiply by the number of years that Rip Van Winkle slept. Twenty. And subtract a baker's dozen. For 13. 25 points, what's your numerical answer? I get 367. You get 367, and that's right. Joe Sheckman. Joe Sheckman. 19th Amendment, multiplied by 20 years, subtracting 13, you get 367. Okay, here we go. Time and score, Roger. Right now, we have 16 minutes to go. Georgetown 30, Minnesota 105. All right, now may I tell you that coming up next is a 50-point bonus. So on your toes, Georgetown in Minnesota. Here's your toss-up. The Prime Minister of Pakistan, in his recent visit to the United States, presented the chief of a tribe of American Indians with a Hubble bubble. For 10 points, what is a Hubble bubble? Minnesota. Eleanor Vale. A Hubble bubble is a uh, pipe. It's, I believe it's a water pipe that you can smoke. Right, a water pipe or a hooker, right? For 10 points, Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota. Perhaps you've never finished reading the following, but you should be able to recognize the opening lines. You'll get 10 points each time you identify the works that begin with these lines. First of all, sing goddess the wrath of Achilles, Peleus' son, the ruinous wrath it's that Homer. brought on the yeah, Achaean Homer. foes Homer. innumerable. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's Iliad, I think. Yeah. What? Iliad. 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 Homer's Iliad, right, for 10 points. I'm Joe Sheckman again. Okay, Joe. All right. Quote. Of man's first disobedience. That sounds like right. paradise lost. <laughs> oh, I was going to quote quite a few lines and I had rehearsed it for <laughs> Right. Milky's paradise lost. Okay. Now let me say this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> Arms and the man I sing, who forced by fate and haughty Juno's unrelenting hate, expelled and exiled, left the Trojan shore. That's the Aeneid. 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 Oh, well, thank you for letting me read it. <laughs> Eleanor Vale. <laughs> Virgil's the Aeneid. How'd I read it, Eleanor? Very Splendidly. Nice. Oh, good. Now, I rehearsed this next one, too. All right, quote. In the middle of the journey of our life, I came to myself in a dark wood where the straight way was lost. That's a bunion. It's a bunion. Progress, 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 right? Right? progress, right? No. It is not. Hmm. No. Dante's Divine Comedy. All right. You'll get five, ten more points if you know this one. Quote. Stately, plump Buck Mulligan came That's from the... James the... Joyce, isn't it, Ulysses? That's right. I didn't even finish it. All right, for 10 points. Go ahead, John Rogers. Time now, 14 and a half minutes to go. Minnesota leading Georgetown 155 to Georgetown's 30. All right, here we go with a 40-point bonus coming up. Modern interior decorating has recently emphasized the material obtained from ancient Carrara. For 10 points, what is that material? Georgetown. Jim Malloy. Marble. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. Marble. Here, Georgetown is a 40 point bonus. It's a bonus question on famous houses of fact and fiction. 10 points apiece if you identify the following houses. First of all, the house that housed the cat that killed a rat that ate some malt. Jack built. The house that Jack built. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. The house that contains 435 people. The, uh, the House of Representatives. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. All right. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe's House That Fell. Usher. Usher. House of Usher. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. The house, the Boston house, the Boston house, after which a bakery product is named. Hathaway. Huh? What? The Boston house after which a bakery product. Wrong? Parker House. Parker House Road, you know? All right, scoring time, Roger. Well, we have exactly 12 and a half minutes to go, Alan. Georgetown housed themselves 70 points at that moment. Minnesota still leads with 155. Okay, and there's the halftime. Is it halftime, Mr. McGregor? All right, halftime, halftime whistle. <laughs> ah, there it is. One minute timeout. Now, we're going to talk to the teams in just a moment, but may I remind you that I thought this was time. All right, starting in their current issues... Good Housekeeping Magazine is running a monthly page of college quiz bowl questions. Now, for a chance to match your wits with our collegiate champions, see the November issue of Good Housekeeping Magazine. It's on the newsstand right now. Good Housekeeping, you know, also awards the $500 weekly cash prize that goes to the college of the winning team here in our radio college quiz bowl. Now, let's take some time out here to talk to the colleges. First of all, let's go out to Minnesota and talk to Colleen Helgeson Nelson. Helgeson Nelson, who is uh, back from last year's winning team, only her name has been changed. What's, di what's been added, Colleen? Well, I was married in September. You were? And it's yes. And Nelson is now your name, but oh, you're yes. a senior in college, right? Yes, that's right. What's new around the Minnesota campus this year? 
Well, uh, our new quiz team, for one thing. <laughs> yeah? Is there excitement out there? Or... Oh, yes. We have a very large and very enthusiastic group here this evening. Who's your coach this year? Our coach is uh, Professor John Wolfe of the Minnesota History Department. All right, fine. It's good to have you all back, Colleen, Helgeson, Nelson. I'm sure your friends all across the country are happy to hear that you're still at Minnesota and still on the quiz bowl team. Now, let's go down to the campus of Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. and speak to... Uh, Leo O'Donovan. Leo, what's new in your campus tonight? Oh, we have Dr. Buckter with us, Alan, who was Minnesota's coach last year. Yeah. Quiz ball team. He's right there in your audience tonight, huh? Yeah, that's Rooting right. Rooting for his old team. You know, Leo, I, I know you're pr proud to have Dr. Donovan in your, <laughs> Dr. Buckter <laughs> in your uh, audience there. I, you know, I'm curious, Leo, I'd like to find out about the colors of Georgetown University. They're what blue and gray, Alan. For any particular reason? Yes, when the uh, Civil War broke out, a number of the... Uh, well, I guess almost all of the students went either north or south to fight for the north or the south. And after the war was over, when they came back, they changed the colors from what they had been to blue for the north and uh, gray for the south, uh, symbol symbolizing the unity, which was there again. Well, you know, that's a very interesting piece of historical information, and I'm glad to have heard it from you, Leo. Is the interest on in your campus still great for our college quiz bowl? Yes, very much so. Good, yeah. okay. Our time hot period is up right now, so I guess we'd better get back to the quiz. Right, Alan, we have 11 minutes to go. Score, Georgetown 70, Minnesota 155, and back to another toss-up question. Coming up is a 25-point bonus. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. What color do you particularly associate with Ethan Allen's boys? <laughs> Minnesota. Chuck Mulkey. Green Mountain Boys, Alan, so it would be green. Green. Green Mountain Boys. Right, Minnesota. Ten points. Here's your 25-point bonus. Uh, it's a tough one. It's out of the news very recently, and it's worth 25 points. I want you to tell me, anybody in the Minnesota team, what former presidential candidate was elected to the Senate in the recent election? Strom Thurmond, Alan. He's a senator presently from South Carolina who was the first candidate ever elected to the United States Senate by a write-in vote. He beat Brown about 166,000 to about 38,000. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted his name. <laughs> Man, I'd say you earned that 25 points. You're a history major? Well, Alan, I'm what the university calls an interdepartmental major, and history is one of my subjects. Well, I would say you did very well on that. Now, we've got a 30-point musical bonus coming up with a score, Roger. 70 points for Georgetown, 190 for Minnesota, nine and a half minutes to go. Okay, here's our musical bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. Recently, a noted Frenchman who was once called a wild beast, Minnesota. Eleanor Vale. Henri Matisse, he died. That's right. <laughs> that was interrupted, but that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, called a wild beast died. Who was he? And you got it all right there. Now, you've got a 30-point classical bonus here, Minnesota. I'm going to play excerpts from three classical compositions, and for 10 points apiece, you are to name the kind of bird, animal, or insect named in each title. First? Bumblebee. Bumblebee, Bumblebee is right. right, for 10 points. All right. This one. What is named in this? Peter the Wolf. <laughs> oh, we don't get to hear much music. <laughs> All right, ten points. All right, what's named in this? Fawn. Fawn. Yeah, afternoon of a fawn. Debussy. No. Coke. Door, Cook Door, a Rooster, Rimsky Korsakoff. All right, here we go with a thirty-point new bonus coming up. Your toss-up for ten points. Quote the familiar aphorism. Disguised in the following words, quote, Utilize the slender bar stiffingly and impair the disposition of the descendant. Minnesota. Joe Sheckman. Uh, stitch in time saves nine. Can you take it, Georgetown? Paul Troy. Uh, spare the rod and spoil the child. Right. Spare the rod and spoil the child. That is the answer. All right, here we go. With your 30-point uh, bonus, 30-point bonus, Georgetown. The names of cities often change with the tides of history. We will give you the present names of three historic cities, and for 10 points apiece, you're to give us the past name of each city, anybody in the Georgetown team. First of all, New York. New Amsterdam. Right, New Amsterdam. Who was that? Paul Troy, sir. Okay, Paul. Leningrad. Uh, St. Saint Saint Petersburg. Petersburg. St. Petersburg of Petrograd, all right. Jakarta. Jakarta. Batavia. Right, Batavia in Indonesia. Ten more points to Georgetown. Seven and a half minutes to go. Georgetown now, 110. Minnesota, 220, Alan. All right, here we go. They could make it. Here we go. For ten points, tell us. What fishing bird's name also means a greedy or gluttonous person? Minnesota. Colleen Helgeson. 
a kingfisher. Can you take it, Georgetown? Could, wait a minute. Could you repeat wait, 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 wait. No, that was not interrupted. No. Can you take it, Georgetown? Could you repeat the question, please? No, I'm sorry. The Cormorant? Was... Cormorant is right. That's the answer. <laughs> Fishing bird's name also means a greedy or gluttonous person. Cormorant. All right, you got a 20-point bonus there, Georgetown. 20 points if you can spot three reasons why the following statement is incorrect. Now, let me caution you. I want three reasons. Quote, Venus de Milo acknowledged an introduction to the Nikki of Samothrace by shaking her hand, and the Nikki also nodded her head. Three errors. Three the the v wing victory has no head. Venus has no arms. And uh, to who was the other introduction? What? No. Acknowledge an introduction. By shaking her, shaking her hand, and the Nikki also handed her. Should I accept that? The Nikki has no hands. That's right. That's right. The three mistakes were the, the Venus has no hands, neither does the Nikki, and the Nikki also has no head. All right. Score it now, huh? Score right now. Five and a half minutes to go. Georgetown, 140. Minnesota, 220. All right. Coming up is a 20-point bonus. For 10 points, tell us, when a ship passes from salt to fresh water, does it... Draw more water than before. Georgetown. Paul Troy. It's passing from salt to fresh water, it would draw more water than before. That's right. That's the answer I was looking for. Although you interrupted my question, I was going to say, does it draw more water than before? Less water at the same amount, it does draw more water. So, Georgetown, you've got a 20-point bonus. You are to imagine that one United States fleet is assigned to guard the country's Pacific coastline, a second fleet, the Atlantic coastline, and a third, the Gulf coastline. Now, for 20 points... Which of the three fleets, Georgetown, would have the shortest line to guard? The, they're having a conference. The Pacific. That's right. The fleet guarding the Pacific coastline. 20 points for Georgetown. All right, another 20-point bonus coming up. Scoring time again, Roger. Right now, five minutes to go. Georgetown, 170, Minnesota, 220. Okay, here we go. Ten points if you can identify the famous American financier who has the same last name as a kind of horse. Georgetown. Jim Malloy. Gould. Can you take it, Minnesota? I think Colleen Helgeson wants to try it, that, Alan. Try it. That's Morgan. That's right. That's J.P. Morgan. The Morgan horse is a light horse, originally bred in Vermont. Okay, I have here... Uh, here we go with your 20-point bonus. The fictional Gant family is a fictional town in a fictional town called Altamont, Minnesota, the fictional Gant family in a fictional town called Altamont were patterned after a real-life family in a real-life city. 20 points if you can name both the family and the city, Minnesota. Uh, Joe Sheckman, I think, I knows think, that. I think that would be the Wolf family of Asheville, North Carolina. Ah, uh, and you thought right for 20 points. The Wolf family in Asheville, North Carolina. The Gant of Altamont figured in Thomas Wolf's novel, Look Homeward Angel. All right. Here is a musical toss-up. So on your toes. The Metropolitan Opera Company is reviving an opera this season, which has not been done here for over 10 years. We're going to play an excerpt from an aria out of this opera, and you are to signal as soon as you can name the opera. Georgetown. Jim Malloy. Andrea Chenier by Giordano. That's right, Andrea Chenier by Giordano. Can you tell us the name of that aria? Come on, Beldi Di Macho. That's right. Okay, you got a 25-point uh, bonus, Georgetown. Three men, Jack Straw, Watt Tyler, and John Ball, took a trip to London in the year 1381. 25 points, Georgetown, if you can describe the purpose of their visit. In 1381. Jack Straw, Watt Tyler, W-A-T, Tyler, and John Ball. Georgetown. They were going to blow up Parliament? No, no, no. Oh, That's all I have to accept. It was a revolution. It was the Watts Rebellion of 18, th 1381 in England. The peasants revolt. I don't know if they're going to blow up Parliament or not, but they were going to revolt, and that would be, I would say, not peaceable. All right, give them 25. What was that, 25 points? All right, here we go. What's the time and score, Roger? And a 25-point bonus brings Georgetown to 205, Minnesota 250. We have two and a half minutes to go, Alan. 20-point bonus coming up for 10 points. Quote the line of verse that follows this one. The Assyrian came down like the wolf, Minnesota. Um, uh, like the wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold. That's right. <laughs> well, what is that, Joe? What is that? 
That's from Lord Byron, um, That's Destruction right. of Sennacherib. Okay, here's your 20-point bonus that you earned by that joke. Anybody in the Minnesota team, we'll give you 20 points if you can quote for us the shortest verse in the Bible. Colleen Helgeson. Jesus wept. Right, for 20 points, Minnesota. Okay, here we go with a 25-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. If you overheard two men discussing their satanics, bisects, and surcharges, what would they be discussing? Georgetown. Bob Kleisler. Their stamp collections. That's right, their stamp collections. All those terms are terms used by stamp collectors. In Georgetown, you earned a 25-point bonus here. The Missouri Compromise provided that Missouri should be admitted to the Union as a slave state. Now, according to that compromise, and for 25 points, what state was to be admitted as a free state? Georgetown. California. Nope. Maine. No. Uh, all right. Did I hear Maine? Yeah. I'll Maine. accept it. Maine. It's also provided the slavery to be free from all Louisiana purchase territory. Okay, what was that? 20 points. 25 points. Okay, time and score, Roger. Time right now. One minute to go. Georgetown, 240. Minnesota, 280, Allen. 20-point bonus coming up for 10 points. Tell us. What is the name of the medal which is awarded for gallantry above and beyond the call of duty? Georgetown. Bob Kleisler. The Congressional Medal of Honor. Right, for 10 points, Georgetown. Here's your 20-point bonus. It's a political theory question. This man lived during the Renaissance, and he likened an effective ruler to the lion and the fox. Who is he, and what did he mean? Machiavelli. Machiavelli and the prince. All right, can you quickly define it? Uh, just kill him quickly or else... Uh... That's right. Kill him quickly if you're smart. All right. Here we go. Well, now, we, the score is 20, 270 to 280, right? Right. Coming up is a four-part, 40-point bonus. Oh, my goodness. A 10-point toss-up. In what novel does this epitaph appear? Quote, he loved his country as no other man has loved her but uh, Georgetown. Bob Kleisley. That's the uh, man without a country. That's 10 points for Georgetown. Yeah! We have a tie. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, we got a tie tonight. That's up. It's a tie. Here it is. That means that the game is over, Alan, and the University of Minnesota and Georgetown University wind up tonight's battle of wits in the college quiz bowl with 280 points each, the first tie we've had in the college quiz bowl. <laughs> so that means that next week they meet again. Now, the gift for the winning college next week... <laughs> ah, yes, so the gift for the winning college next week will be $1,000 from Good Housekeeping Magazine. And we'll hold our attractive and dependable Whitnauer wristwatches to award them to the members of the losing team next week. Now, you know, these Whitnauer watches are members of the Longines Whitnauer family of fine watches since 1866, makers of watches of the highest character. Alan, we've had a tie. Okay, and I'm so confused, I don't know. It just goes to prove that anything could happen here in the college quiz bowl. So, next week, it ought to be a real battle with Minnesota University returning to meet Georgetown University for the second time in the college quiz bowl. I want to congratulate Eleanor Vail, Colleen Helgeson Nelson, Chuck Mulkey, and Joseph Sheckman of Minnesota. Leo O'Donovan, oh, Bob Crisley, Jim Malloy, and Paul Troy of Georgetown, you really gave us a battle tonight. Now, I think we can promise everybody quite an exciting quiz next week. You know, we will have to then for, therefore postpone our competition with Smith College, which was set for next week. We're inviting everybody to join us next week at the same time when, once again, the University of Minnesota and Georgetown University meet here in the College Quiz Bowl. So this is Alan Ludden saying so long, everybody, and don't forget our date next week. Okay, bye now. Oh, what a close and a tie. Ladies and gentlemen, your referees tonight were for Georgetown University, Mac McGarry of WRC in Washington, and for the University of Minnesota, Bob Boyle of Station KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. College Quiz Bowl is a transcribed NBC radio network presentation originated and produced by John Moses and Don Reed, written by Nancy Fobes and directed by Ken McGregor. This is Roger Tuttle speaking. <laughs>